interpreting the prophecies. Geronda, some people say whatever is written by God, that is what will happen. Why then should we be concerned? Yes, they say that, my child, but it is not how it is. I do hear some people saying, the Jews are not such fools as to be betrayed by the 666. When the evangelist John writes about it in the book of Revelation, if they were, they would have done it in a smarter, more secretive manner. But can we say that the scribes and the Pharisees did not know the Old Testament? Didn't Annas and Caiaphas know better than anyone that in the Old Testament it was written that a Messiah would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver? Why didn't they ask for 31 or 29 and instead ask for 30? But they were blind. God knew that things would happen in this way. God foreknows, but it does not predestine. Only the Turks believe in what is written in Kismet. God knows that something will happen in a particular way, but man still does it out of his foolishness. It is not a matter of God having made a specific decision, but he sees the evil deeds of men and where it will lead them, and knows that their minds will not change. Again, it is not a matter of God arranging things to happen in a particular manner. Other people are preoccupied with prophecies and devise their own interpretation. They do not say, at least this is my opinion about this matter, but they state unequivocally, this is how it is, and then go on to relate many theories of their own. Some will interpret the prophecies to their liking in order to justify their passions. An example of this is the statement made by Saint Cyril. It would be better if the signs of the Antichrist did not take place in our times. Someone who wants to justify himself, his cowardice will say, Ah, you see, Saint Cyril was afraid he might deny Christ if he had to face the dangers of the Antichrist. Am I any better than Saint Cyril? Therefore, even if I should deny Christ under such conditions, it is of no consequence. Of course, St. Cyril said that the events should not happen so that his eyes would not see the Antichrist, and not that he was afraid of him. Do you see what the devil can do? Again, certain Gnostics unfortunately wrap up their spiritual children with sweat sweating bands, as if they were infants, presumably to protect them from worrying. This does not matter, that is not important. As long as you believe inside, or they may advise them, do not talk about a subject, about the ID cards, the seal, so as not to upset people. On the contrary, if they tell them, let's try to live more spiritually, let's be close to Christ, don't be afraid of anything, and the final reckoning will go as true witnesses and martyrs then at least they will be better prepared. When we know the truth, we are given the opportunity to be troubled to ask questions. We are pained by the present condition. We pray more fervently and we are careful not to fall into a spiritual trap. But now what? Besides giving their own interpretations, some are also fearful like worldly people. When these spiritual teachers should be troubled spiritually over the situation and should be helping the Christians by instilling in them a positive concern and by strengthening their faith to find divine consolation. I ask myself, are they not troubled by all these events which are taking place in our society and in our time? Why don't they put even one question mark against the interpretations of their mind? And if they themselves render indirect assistance to the Antichrist regarding the seal, how can they mislead other souls toward perdition? When the sacred scripture says, to lead astray, if possible, the elect, it means that the people who try to interpret these matters with their own mind can readily go astray into error. Therefore, behind the perfect system of the service card, the security computer, the sinister global dictatorship is lurking. The Antichrist slavery, and he causes all the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the free and the bound, that there be given them a mark on their right hand or upon their forehead, and that no man should be able to buy or to sell, save he that had the mark, even the name of the beast or the number of his name. 
Here is wisdom, he that had understanding. Let him count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred and sixty-six.